Okay, friends, one of the first things we have to do is safely raise and support the front of the vehicle so the wheel's off the ground. You're gonna also wanna make sure that the suspension's hanging, so go ahead and raise it by the actual subframe itself. After that, we're just gonna go ahead and remove this hubcap right here. You can gently pull on it. Set that aside, and then remove all five of your 21 millimeter lug nuts. If your wheel's stuck on there, just go ahead and put on a lug nut, give it a little bonk from the back. Remove the wheel. Now with the wheel off, we're gonna start removing our caliper and then the rest of the brakes. To remove the caliper, typically I like to come in between this area with a nice pry bar. I'm gonna gently pry between the caliper itself and the rotor, just enough to make it so I have a little bit of wiggle here. After that, remove your two 17 millimeter caliper bracket bolts. Leave that in there just a couple threads, remove your other one. All right, we've got them both out. Now let's carefully grab our caliper. We're gonna slide it up and off the rotor. Inspect the brake pads real quick. Essentially, we just wanna make sure we have plenty of meat on these, just in case we need to do a brake job. And then we're just gonna hang this so we're putting no pressure on our flex hose. Now let's just use a little bit of penetrant. One lug nut. And now we're just gonna go ahead and give this a little bonk to try to get it off of here. Now if you're gonna be replacing the rotors, you don't have to worry about hitting this, but if you're not replacing the rotors, make sure you come in this area and definitely don't damage any of your lug studs. Remove your rotor. Next, we're gonna remove our axle nut right here. Do that using a 12.30 millimeter socket. Set that aside. Apply some penetrant in this area. Then take a hammer and a punch. You're gonna come right in the center right here and start driving this axle out of the bearing area. We just wanna go far enough back to try to break it free. Moving around a little bit, it feels as though it's starting to come free. At this point, we're gonna move along to removing this small 10 millimeter headed bolt right here, which holds the ABS sensor to the knuckle. Okay, that broke free. Get that bolt out of there, set that aside. Now we're just gonna grab onto that ABS sensor, carefully remove it from the knuckle here. If it feels as though your ABS sensor is stuck inside the knuckle and you're worried that it might potentially break, just go ahead and follow that ABS wire all the way up to its next connection point and then separate it from there. This overall is the safest place because we're gonna be taking the knuckle off and we need to do some work on it. Let's grab onto these two tabs. There's one on this side, one on the other side, same spot. Carefully slide that apart. Just inspect that ABS sensor. This one looks great, so we'll set it aside, making sure that we're putting no pressure on it. Let's move along to this area right here. We're gonna start separating our outer tie rod end from the knuckle. To do that, you're gonna find a cotter pin under here. That's kind of the lock for the nut itself. So let's just go ahead and pull this up and then just try to drive it through. Now I'm just gonna start that nut on there a couple threads. Leave that right as it is, and then we're gonna continue on to separating these two. For this, of course, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the threads of the tie rod are nice and protected because we don't wanna go ahead and damage those. After that, let's take our hammer, and we're gonna gently hit along this area here until this tries to separate. Use some penetrant if you feel as though you need some. There we are, now that it's broken free, let's go ahead and remove this nut. Slide this right up and out of there, and we'll set this aside. Once your tie rod's out, let's move along to this area right here. Now these two bolts are gonna be what holds the knuckle to the strut itself. Let's go ahead and spray down the threaded area with some penetrant, get in between these areas here. And then we're just gonna take a wrench on this side and a socket on that side and remove both of these nuts. For both of these, I'm just gonna use a 22 millimeter. Okay. 
remove the nut. We'll leave that bolt in there for now. Move along to the top. Now at this point, we're just gonna wiggle this around. We can start removing these. There might be a little bit of pressure on this one because of course it's trying to pull down and this is essentially holding it in position. So if you just lift up on it or move it around, generally it should come out. If it doesn't for some reason, you could put your nut back on there and just give it a couple loving bonks to help it free. Now we're just gonna carefully start separating this right here, but you wanna be very careful not to put a tug on your axle. So as I start pulling this down, I'm also gonna be pushing my axle out through the bearing. Let's follow that knuckle down to this lower aspect right here. This is where the lower ball joint's gonna connect onto the control arm. You're gonna find one 17 millimeter bolt right here and then two 17 millimeter nuts. Let's start by removing the bolt. Set that aside. Start removing these nuts. Now for this last one right here, you just have to keep in mind that there isn't gonna be anything holding the knuckle in here. So as I start to remove this, I'm just gonna make sure I hold on to the knuckle so it can't fall down and hurt me. Go ahead and grab onto that knuckle, remove it from the vehicle. Now that we have this off of the vehicle, the next thing that I wanna do is start removing this protective tin right along this area. You're gonna see that it has a hole that goes through it, and this is essentially right where that ABS sensor is supposed to go. So after we go ahead and remove this and we replace our bearing, we're gonna to have to reinstall this and have it lined up perfectly. So just take note of exactly how it is. After that, let's take a little bit of penetrant. I'm just gonna go along the edge here. And then we'll just take a nice small hammer. We don't have to hit it very hard and a pry bar. I'm gonna to try to get underneath this edge a little bit and just start uh, knocking it up. There we are. We're gonna to wanna to inspect that and of course clean it and we'll set it aside. All right, so I have this inside the press right here and essentially what we're gonna be trying to do is to try to press the hub out of the bearing itself. And this bearing right here is inside the knuckle. So what we're basically gonna do is just press up against this area right here and just try to drive this on through. Now for our press, we just have this kind of set up essentially so it's holding up against the knuckle itself. And after that, we can go ahead and drive the hub down and through. There we are. There's our hub, set this aside for recycling. Now to continue removing the bearing from the knuckle, we're gonna to have to go ahead and take out the lock ring on this. If you were to feel along where the knuckle and the bearing tend to look like they meet, there's actually a snap ring right in here. You can feel one edge right there. And then I'll just get all this crud right out of the way. And then there's another piece right there. And there's a gap right in the center. So what we're essentially gonna do is grab some snap ring pliers, try to squeeze this together, and then we need to get this snap ring up and out of here so we can remove the bearing from the knuckle. Okay, so you can see that that's starting to break free here. Just go ahead and try to pop it out of its little groove. You wanna be very careful and watch your eyes for this. Now the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is clean and inspect this right here. If it looks like it's rotted or it's very weak, then you're gonna to wanna to replace it. This one actually looks like it's in really good condition, so I'll just take it to the wire wheel, clean it up, and we'll continue on back at the press and we're gonna start taking this bearing out of the knuckle. So we have this set up on the press. At this point, I have it so I have a bar coming across these two ears. That's gonna help keep this stable. And then on the other side, I have another bar right here which comes underneath the knuckle along there. We wanna make sure we have plenty of room directly underneath the bearing so when we press this down and through, it's gonna be able to come out without any restriction. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is just take a cup. I have an extra bearing that's just kind of sitting around. It's an old one. I'm gonna slide it in here and essentially I just want it to grab onto the bearing but not necessarily the knuckle. We'll go ahead and put that on there. I'll put a plate going across, and then we'll just start driving this down and through. We're gonna have to have a lot of pressure, you're gonna hear some popping noises, and of course there is the probability that metal or something could come flying, so make sure you're wearing hand and eye protection at all times. There we are. Okay, we got our bearing out of there, we'll recycle that. We're gonna clean up the hub, and then we'll get ready to install our brand new bearing. Now when we start cleaning this up, of course you're gonna to wanna to have a nice collection bucket because we don't wanna go ahead and get any of the fluid anywhere. The areas that we're gonna to wanna to pay special attention to is pretty much any areas that you see large chunks of metal or rust or debris that are sitting around. So you're just gonna to wanna to go ahead and scrape that right out of the way. And then other areas that you wanna pay extra special attention to 
is the area, of course, that you can see that's nice and smooth. That's essentially where the new bearing is going to sit. And then if you were to follow that all the way towards the front area of the knuckle here, you can see the lip. Now this lip right here has to be free and clear of any debris. So after you clean everything down, make sure you do this area last. When we press in the bearing, it needs to go all the way in, press up against that. If you have anything in the way, you're not going to be able to get your snap ring back in. Now let's go ahead and install our brand new bearing. Let's line this up with the knuckle. As you can tell, I have everything as flat as possible here. Now if you wanted to, you can continue on by using your original bearing here. The reason why I would do that is because it's going to sit perfectly along the lip of the brand new one. When you're pressing this in, you need to be along the lip here, not on this inner area or on the very inner area right there. If you press any of this, you could potentially damage the brand new bearing, in which case you're going to have to replace it again. So I'll just take this. It's going to go right along that outer lip right there. Then we'll just take something else, put it across the top here. And now we'll continue on by pressing this straight in as possible. As we press it in, we're going to keep paying attention just to make sure it's not kiltering or going off to one side or the other. Now, as you can tell, this is taking very minimal pressure to go ahead and drive this in. If you feel as though you're putting a lot of pressure or it doesn't seem like it wants to go in straight, that just means you have to go ahead and retry to set it and have it as straight as possible. Okay, so right there, it feels as though it bottomed out. I'm just gonna give it a little bit more pressure here. I'm gonna grab a hammer. While it's still under pressure, let's just give this a little bonk along the knuckle here. A little bit of vibration helps settle things in. Release pressure. Get this stuff out of the way. Just use a rag. We're gonna wipe out any mess that might have made its way in here. Then we can take our snap ring. As you can tell, I cleaned it up. Looks really good. We'll get it onto the snap ring pliers. Carefully grab onto it. We're gonna give it a little squeeze, slide it into place. There we are. Now let's continue on with our pry bar here. I'm just gonna carefully come along the edge of this and essentially I just wanna try knocking it down. Basically we just wanna make sure that the snap ring is inside the knuckle. So now we're gonna set up the press a little bit more like this, nice and flat. We're gonna have a brick under here and essentially we just want it to be on this area so we're not gonna put any damage to our studs right there. I'm gonna hold that as close to centered as possible with this. Then we can take our knuckle and we're just gonna go ahead and put that hub up and into the bearing here. So I'll just line it up so it's as flush as possible. Next, I'm gonna take a socket that fits along just this inner ring right here. We just wanna be pressing on the inner portion. You definitely don't wanna press on this outer portion right there because like I said before, you're gonna damage that bearing. Line it up as close as you can. Then we're gonna just start pressing this down. I'm just gonna put something in here to take up a little bit of the space. As I'm doing that, I'm, I can also spin this a little bit. That's ensuring that I have everything and it's not binding. Now at this point, you can see that the hub's coming up and through the bearing. That's a great sign. What I want to do now is just make it so I have a nice flat plate that comes across this. Once again, I'm only trying to press on this center aspect of the bearing itself. But basically, if I have a flat plate, it's going to make it so this hub can't continue to keep coming up, and that's not going to mess up our alignment. Okay, right there I feel as though it bottomed out. I'm just going to give it a little bit more pressure here. A couple bonks with the hammer. Release the pressure and inspect it. Okay, this looks perfect. Now we can get back over to the vehicle. Now let's go ahead and clean up this shield so we can install it. At this point, we're gonna make sure that we line up our ABS hole with ABS hole on the knuckle itself. Go ahead and slide it down. Make sure it's as close to centered as possible. It's very important that you line this up, otherwise you're gonna have an ABS issue. Now once you feel as though it's lined up, we're just gonna gently tap this around all the way around in a circle, get it to go down as straight as possible. Inspect it, make sure it's completely seated, and now we can start putting the knuckle back onto the car. Let's put some copper never sees on this splined area. You don't necessarily need to get it on the threads. Now we can start putting our knuckle on here. We're going to go ahead and carefully slide the axle into the bearing as we bring this up. We're also going to be putting the ball joint studs into that lower control arm. Just to try to get it all done at once. Alright, so now that I have that started in, I'm just going to carefully take my bolt here. 
I like to clean up the threads, add a little bit of red thread locker. We'll start this in by hand. Once it's started, go ahead and start on both of these nuts. Now we can bottom these out and then we'll torque them to 55 foot pounds. Start with the bolt. Now let's take both of our strut bolts in our hand with some red thread locker. We're going to carefully start aligning this. As we bring it up, let's go ahead and slide the axle into that wheel bearing. You want to be very careful not to damage your axle boot in any way. Now as I have these lined up, I'm paying attention to the axle. This looks great. We definitely don't want to put a bind on the axle at all. Just carefully start putting these bolts through. this out of here. Start on both of these nuts. Once we do that, we'll go ahead and bottom these out and then we're going to torque them to 133 foot pounds. Hold the bolt, snug the nut. Let's move along to the ABS wire. We're just going to carefully slide this right over the knuckle here. Should want to sit in there. Now we're going to go ahead and install the ABS sensor into the knuckle. Just look at it, make sure you don't see any large rust flakes that stick to it. Technically there should be a little bit of a magnet on there and you don't want it interfering. Let's slide it right into position here. Take our little mounting bolt. Don't use any thread locker on this. You definitely don't want that to be stuck in there for the next time in case you have to remove this. Okay, it bottomed out. I'm just gonna go ahead and give it just a teeny bit more here. We wanna be very careful not to break the bolt or the sensor, but we do of course wanna make sure it's secure. That feels great. Let's get this tie rod end in here. We've got our castle nut. You wanna make sure that you have it so the slots are facing down. We'll go ahead and bottom this out and then we're gonna to torque it to 36 foot pounds. Now the next thing we want to do is pay attention to the slot of the nut in comparison to the hole in the stud of the tie rod. You want to make sure they're lined up so we can get the cotter pin in there. If it isn't, you need to continue tightening this until the very next slot is. It looks like this one needs to continue being tightened. Once it's lined up, take your cotter pin, slide it through, and then peen it over so there's no way this nut can loosen up on its own. Now the next thing we need to do is clean up the back side of this rotor right here. This is the mating surface that's going to be right up against that brand new hub that we installed. Let's make sure it's clean and free of any debris. <laughs> After you've done that, let's continue on to applying some copper never sees along this area here. Go ahead and grab the rotor, slide it right on there. Now at this point, I always like to use one of my lug nuts. I'm just gonna go ahead and start it right on here and bottom it out. That's essentially gonna prevent this from wobbling around and potentially getting rust or anything in between the two areas. Grab your caliper. We're just gonna go ahead and slide those brake pads right over the rotor. Now we're gonna take both of our bolts with some red thread locker. We'll start them right in there and bottom them out. Torque these to 79 foot-pounds. Now let's put some red thread locker right on this axle right here. And then we're going to take our brand new nut, put it right on there. And now at this point, you're going to want to make sure that you tighten it up by hand with a ratchet. After that, you can torque it to manufacturer specifications, but don't use an air gun because you could potentially damage your bearing. Now we're going to torque this to 217 foot-pounds. What you're going to notice as you try to tighten this is it's probably going to try to spin on you. If you don't have a second person that can go ahead and step on the brakes for you, you're just going to have to use a bar coming across these studs just like I have it and all the way down to the ground. That's going to prevent this from spinning.
After you have it torqued, you're gonna make sure that you take a punch and you drive this part of the nut down into that groove right there. That's gonna lock it in so it can't loosen up. Perfect. At this point, we're just gonna give everything a double check. Make sure that your ABS wire is connected. You also wanna ensure that the flex hose for your brake caliper isn't twisted like a little pigtail or anything like that. That could potentially cause a restriction. You definitely torqued everything that we were supposed to torque along the way. After that, let's go ahead and remove this lug nut. We'll get the wheel on here, snug up the lug nuts, get the wheel back on the ground, and torque it to 76 foot-pounds. We have the wheel safely touching the ground. Let's torque these in a crisscross manner. Torqued. If you have a hubcap, make sure you go ahead and put it back on there. Okay friends, we got the car all back together. What's left to do now? Now you're gonna wanna go ahead and pump up your brake pedal so it's nice and firm. After that, take it for a road test down to your local alignment shop. Thanks.